what makes you nervous no matter how many times you do it, sticking my hand inside the disposal when I drop a fork in it, I've seen people telling me to unplug the disposal, how does one do that, let's do the fork in the garbage disposal. Approaching a green light that has been green too long but you are getting to the distance where you don't know whether or not you should stop or if you can stop. Tuning my violin. Ugh. When that E string snaps and whips you in the face, the E string is the worst. Had one time it snapped while tuning before a concert. I was able to get a backup, but still it's nerve wracking. Drive in front of a police officer when I have no reason to be nervous. Sit next to one at traffic lights. Do I look at them? If I don't does it look suspicious? Do I pretend like I'm bored? What do I do? I had a buddy who used to wave at them whenever he would see one as a joke. He stopped when they noticed him first and waved. His exact word were oh, they know me. Smile and wave boys. Smile and wave. Using my table saw. Even though I am a carpenter. Smart man stay cautious. Constant vigilance. Mad I moody. Handling an angle grinder makes me nervous. I have to use it frequently because of my job, but it never gets easier. Putting my luggage in the overhead storage on a plane. Major anxiety like what if I'm the last person on the plane and have to run around and look for a place to put my luggage. Using a mandoline slicer. Even using the safety guard I get a little queasy when I have to use it. I sliced my thumb open once because I thought I was too good for the guard. I never ever use it without the guard now and still get too nervous to cut that far down with it. Same here, tip of my finger. What a clean slice. Weird to look at and then see the blood come out of each little paw. I always use the guard now. Anytime I hand edit a database. 1,428,992 rows affected. 0.33 seconds. Oh no. Always run the conditional as a select first. See if what you think and the database think are the same. Anything that has to do with my car. I have been scammed even over a simple oil change. Even if I try to be confident, it's very clear once I start talking that I have no clue about cars. Literally had some one quote $400 to change an air filter. I said no because I could not afford it. Found out later how insane that quote was. Sadly that just fueled my fear. I love it when they pull out my air filter to show me how dirty it is so they can charge me $100 to change it. And I'm like oh wow yeah I'll have to change that. Now go put it back. Sometimes they just have a dirty one on standby and just every one the same thing. My dad told me to always get multiple opinions and quotes from different businesses. So I do that and it helps. Except for oil changes because I get that enough that I know who's the cheapest. Finding a tick on my body, yes, I always think of what disease I will get. When my boss goes can we just have a quick chat, my boss did that to me when I took a day off last year, was very nervous as I knew it was important if he was asking me to chat on my personal day, and sat there nervous about it for 3 hours leading up to our meeting. Turns out I was getting a promotion to manager with a nice pay raise that day was a whirlwind of anxiety and emotions. My boss did this when extenuating circumstances forced me to take like a week off. I told him about my life situation and that I needed to use like 5 days of PTO. And he said okay, when you get back we need to talk f me lol luckily the next day he messaged me saying oh and don't worry, it's good news lol he probably realized how it seemed. Seems like that could have waited until you were back in. These days I always straight up ask if I'm in trouble or getting fired. I don't even ask. I just quit immediately. Why don't you take a seat? So I was going through your performance review. Or come into my office when you get a chance. There's something I'd like to discuss with you. Come on in. Shut the door. Driving past behind in front of a cop. I've got a clean record and I don't do anything illegal but I feel like they will pull me over anyway. And I start to panic if they continue to follow me. Even when on main roads, I look back every 5 seconds to see if they turned their lights and siren on to pull me over. Paranoia? I just got pulled over for the first time last night. I looked for anything and everything I could have done wrong. And the only thing I could think was I'm switching insurance companies. But when he wakes up he simply said don't grab your wallet I just wanted you to know. Your headlights are off I was so relieved but it scared the f out of me. The only time I've ever been pulled over. I was driving down the motorway in fairly busy traffic when out of nowhere a dozen police 4x4s appear surrounding me and the car in front. 
forcing us to the hard shoulder. I switch off my engine and start panicking, then realize they probably didn't want me but the white Land Rover in front. Get waved off without any further explanation. I still wonder what the guy did that they couldn't arrest them the normal way. Flirt. Ask someone out. I'm a very outgoing person. I'm not afraid of phone calls, talking to strangers, or meeting new people. In fact I thrive on it, unless I'm interested in a person. Then I feel like I'd rather die than see their face. It's awful. I'm the same way. It's super annoying. I can give a speech in front of 2000 people no problem. But as soon as I think I may have a chance with someone I clam up. I am a straight man. I only feel comfortable flirting with other straight men. <laughs> Calling off work. The worst. It makes me so nervous I almost always just suck it up and go into work lol. Totally agree. If I actually manage to get through the phone call I spend the rest of the day feeling so guilty I feel worse than I would being sick at work. <laughs> Trying to mingle start conversations in social settings where I don't know anybody. Agreed. I always need an anchor at social events. Then everything is fine. I'll talk to anyone. I need someone to go back to. <laughs> Surprise guests. Those are burglars, or apartment building maintenance. Job interviews. They suck most when you need the damn job, and in many cases, you can expect a high rejection rate. I have had way more than I ever wanted to. And communication. Thanks for your application. Unfortunately we've decided to proceed with other candidates at this time and wish you luck in your job search. This. I'm the worst at job interviews and knowing that makes it worse every time. I always dread job interviews lol. <laughs> Driving in between two semi trucks on the freeway. Bonus points if one or both is carrying a bunch of logs. Driving behind a truck with an overhanging load too. I'm always terrified my depth perception will fail me and I'll ram it with my windshield. My fear is driving behind a car with even a mattress attached to roof. My former boss died after a mattress came off the car in front of him. I sure miss him as he taught me to drive a stick, which was cool. Though the truck was older, 1992 type truck. My cousin died in an accident like that. She was in a goddamn bus at one of the front seats and the bus rear-ended a semi-truck carrying timber. It's a valid fear if you ask me. <laughs> Going to local bars when I'm not a local lol. Those moth affairs can like smell you're not from there even if you live the town over. They all stare at you like you're an outside who needs to leave. So strange. Fee NK and I tried to go to one of our local bars to try their supposedly good food. Enter the threshold. Immediately stared down by the lone group of five. Sat down and was ignored for 20 minutes until the bartender shouts that the grill was down. Cook was off. Got up and left. Kicker was that the owner had been on the local radio station promoting the business and being about not getting enough customers earlier that week. Wonder why? Walking over a storm drain with my keys in my hand. That's how I lost my iPad. I had it in my hoodie pocket and for some reason decided to hop over the drain. As soon as I jumped, I saw my iPad fly out and fall in. I lost a lot of my Lemuire downloads that day. This happened to me with an iPhone 4. I spent like 6 months doing extra chores around the house to earn enough kudo points to buy my mom's old iPhone. I was walking home from this teen nightclub thingy ran by this wonderful old lady. I had pulled it out to skip the song 21 guns. And my jeans pockets were too tight and the phone slipped from my grasp. Bounced once off the sidewalk and then perfectly dropped between the grates without even touching it. I almost cried. Or phone. You ever do that titan grip thing before you walk over it? Do not forget high up ledges and bodies of water. That and being irrationally paranoid that my glasses might fall off and down one of those. And now I have a new fear. <laughs> Climbing a ladder. Climbing up. I'm good. Climbing down? My leg muscles will have none of that. I get all wobbly and it takes me forever to awkwardly get my ordinarily functional body down even just a couple rungs. <laughs> Let's break ourselves into small groups and... And also, before we start, let's go around the room and say a little bit about ourselves. My manager insists on doing this for every meeting with a guest. Footnotes. Every meeting has a guest and there are about 30 people in the room. I have created breakout rooms on the call, and I'll start assigning people to them. Oh god no. For context I routinely work with 460 volts at about 40 amps, turning it all on for the first time. So many times I have done this, I have trained people how to do it, 
I have never once done it where had I not done it right I could have been injured. Yet still every time I almost hear a voice this is it. This is the moment in the video, shown by insurance companies for safety training, where it starts playing. All that comes next is pain and blackness. I know it is absurd. I pull tested the wires. I made sure that I have a power sequencing plan. I know the SCCR. It won't explode because there literally is not enough energy to explode and even if it did the cabinet would protect me. Anyone with half a brain cell, especially a trained professional such as yourself, should understand the potential danger of electricity. With that understanding, one should gain a certain amount of respect and caution whenever working with or around it, no matter how many times they have before. Overconfidence can lead to oversight, error, etc. Your nerves are not unwarranted. Walking out of a store without buying anything, I'm always paranoid that I'll trigger the security alarm for no reason. After school I sometimes pop into a store with my backpack on, most of the time not even buying anything. Always get lucks from people. One time got stopped and searched. Hate it. So embarrassing. Walking into the same store you bought the clothes you're currently wearing from. Especially when they're standing right next to the shirt on display. Going into small businesses that I haven't been in before. When you walk out without buying anything. Oof. When you know you're the only customer and you know they won't have what you went in to find as soon as you walk in. How long do you have to pretend to be just looking to satisfy them that you've seen everything very deliberately and might come back to purchase after you think about it? Should you ask questions about something you don't care about? Should you ask for exactly what you want so they can tell you they don't carry it? Offer a substitute, and then say, no, sorry, it has to be, and then they offer to order it, and then you have to order it? How much will that cost? I know how to order stuff. I mean, this is exactly why people order online. Classic awkward nod and thanks. Anytime I go into a bike shop I get really insecure. The last bike shop I went to I was stopped at the door by the owner. He said, these bikes cost between $6,000 $9,000. Then he gently placed his hand and on my back and moved me back onto the sidewalk. It was probably harmless but I felt incredibly stupid. Geez that guy is an A. Chasing away potential customers is not good business sense. I briefly sold cars years ago. And one thing they stressed is to never pre-qualify people and assume they aren't customers based on appearance. I know from personal experience that there are successful surgeons who, when they aren't at work, honestly dress like they are about to go camping. There are building contractors who make a ton of money. But they spend a lot of time on various work sites and dress accordingly. Honestly if I had a lot of money I'd dress mostly the same way I do now. I just own more pairs of shoes. And a lot nicer watch. And when I did wear a suit it would be one of top quality. Fuhuhuak that guy. It can be scary. Especially if it's a specialty shop of some sort. I like to shop them and have worked at several. But there's always this concern that maybe I'll walk into something insane. I once entered a small food mart where the owner's small daughter was riding a tricycle around the store, into customers. There's a vegetarian restaurant in my city that's half restaurant and half antique shop, and they're not like normal antiques. They're like skeletons, dolls, weird artwork, and stuff hanging from the ceiling. I've heard the food is actually good but I can't work up the nerve to go. At meetings when they say, okay, everyone. Let's go around the room and introduce yourself. Even worse when they require stupid things like, include your favorite food and why you like it or tell us why you're here. Up, uh, because it's mandatory. Tell us why you're here. Up, uh, because it's mandatory. I'm here because I strongly believe in the company, or companies. I owe bills too, and to promptly and diligently collect my paycheck. The problem I have with this is I suddenly forget everything about myself. Favorite food, oh god what have I eaten ever? Favorite movie? I watch movies. Hobbies? I sleep a hobby. Did I even sleep last night? Typically how it goes in my head. My problem is that I want to sound interesting. But I just come off as awkward and nervous. I say something like. I like cooking. But also I like eating more than cooking because I'm a big eater. And I might get a weird pity laugh. But mostly concerned lux because I stumbled through that one really stupid sentence. They asked what is something even your best friend doesn't know about you at a summer camp. I'm like sorry guys. I got nothing. Oh god. This. I was asked to fill out a slide for an introduction for myself at my new job. 
I was asked for the slide info the morning before, so not a lot of time to prepare, it's a tech position. So I figured video games were probably relatable, so I said I like playing retro RPGs. Turns out, this intro meeting was with a bunch of old corporate people, so I told a bunch of managers that I like playing retro RPGs. Rather, my manager did because she was the one reading the slide, and you could tell from her tone of voice that she did not approve. I am already applying elsewhere, I'm a teacher, and my administration insists on these stupid meetings all the time. My first name can be pronounced differently, and my mom chose the rarer pronunciation. So like 5 people say my name right while everyone else, including all of the administrators, mispronounces it. It makes it super awkward to introduce myself to new people, say my name properly, and then have to deal with the temporary shock and confusion. Luckily, everyone goes back to the wrong way for the rest of the year. My mom had 6 kids, and she named the most awkward one with a weird name. It's going to sound dumb, but I started feeling a lot better about these when I started responding with absolutely absurd lies. Hi I'm Xnull and my favorite food is fish tank gravel. The chemical they treated with is non-toxic and slightly sweet for the fish so it tastes a lot like skittles. This is a great plan. I just pick 3 or 4 basic facts that I cycle through. Public speaking. I can't believe I had to scroll this far to find this. I can't remember a single word I've spoken in public despite making several well-received public speeches. Installing Christmas lights on my house. I work in a level 1 trauma center and see people who have fallen from their roofs installing Christmas lights several times a year. That's easy. Don't put them on your house. Put them elsewhere. Like on a bush or not at all. Waiting for a result. If I even think about an exam for which the results haven't been declared. I get a lot of anxiety, currently waiting for the results of a very important exam I gave in February. My heart rate is 120 while writing this, and now I have stomachache, FML. <laughs> Calling someone on the phone, I'm a fairly outgoing person and I love talking to people, but I rely a lot on seeing a person's face and observing their body language, which isn't possible on the phone. Voicemails are less terrible. But I still panic a little because if I mess up while leaving a message, the other person has a freaking recording of me being really awkward. I'm so thankful texting exists. Coming out of my room when guests are visiting. I look w ho s ho wed up. Ha ha so true. The longer you're in there the worse it gets. After 30 minutes you legally can't leave your room. There's an open ocean swim I do with a friend. I love swimming. In pools and lakes. But ocean is different. This is in Canada, in a wetsuit, it's 1.8 kilometers, and no bottom in sight just black. I know seals follow us because friends have told me, the first time we went he commented that I was fast. I'm not fast, it's pure adrenaline, I am motivated by pure fear, I won't do it by myself, and have only done it about 10 times, I am terrified every time. Lots of self talk and I always feel great afterwards. Answering the door. Sometimes I just don't. A closed door is a happy door. Morris Moss. This is London. Jen. It's not someone with cake. Unless that cake is made of dog poo and knives. If I'm not expecting anyone, I usually hide and don't answer either. It's 2021. Text me before you come over. A guy used to hide until I had kids. Now those little fi knocks stampede to the door to see who it is and ruin it for everyone. Poop in someone else's house or away from home. Have a cop behind me. I never effing speed. I love instinctively hitting the brakes. 5 seconds before I realize I was already going the speed limit. Merging onto a busy highway. When I was learning how to drive, my mother took me on the interstate for the first time. She's a nervous driver as is. And I wasn't ready. And there was a lot of crying and screaming and I almost sideswiped a few cars trying not to get run over by a truck trying to merge onto the interstate. Needless to say, even 20 years later, I'm still twitchy on the interstate occasionally. People who get really nervous in the car should absolutely never teach anyone how to drive. It's so effing distracting when you hear them suck in a breath or notice them bracing all the time. My mother was like this and I refused to drive her anywhere. To say the right words during a phone call or any formal event. When my someone says to me can I be honest with you? No. Lie to me. Please. Why? That would put us on such uneven footing. 
I am always super paranoid that I forgot to lock the front door of my work. I've even gotten off of the train and gone back just to make sure it's locked it always has been when I've gone back to check and I should trust myself that I did it at this point. I now yell at myself as I'm doing it so I hear confirmation of it. 2. Before I step away, my mom was always really paranoid about this. 2. She would make us go back a couple mins into road trips, so I guess it really rubbed off. Using an, I think, aluminum measuring tape but especially when clicking the button to make it roll back into its case, at the speed it recoils, I'm scared the tape will slice my hand right open. Driving over train tracks and bridges. It just scares me so much and I have to cross bridges and train tracks to get to some places so that doesn't help. Walking on them also scare me. Since I was 5 it always scared me. I don't know why it just does. Killing a spider. Job interviews. Talking to people. I have social anxiety. Makes me sweat just being around a group of people. After a while I get to know them and I warm up though. Going to the hospital. Parallel parking. Handling my 6 month old, they just seem so fragile and he is just so wiggly. I am constantly paranoid that I may accidentally drop him. To be honest almost all the steps of parenting now that I think about it, if I'm not afraid of accidentally bumping him, I am constantly worrying about what I need to do to be a good parent to him. Phone calls. Taking my cat to the vet, that stresses me out, between the 30 minute wrestling match to get her into the case. Followed by the non-stop screaming, then her chewing on the bars and trying to rip the door open, the throwing up from motion sickness in the car, the vet overcharging me for some tiny procedure, followed by the your cat needs 8000 teeth extracted or she needs the kangaroo vaccine in case she is kidnapped to Australia, please bring her back in tomorrow so we can do this. Driving, same here, I've never managed to get totally comfortable with it, like everyone else I know. Starting a new job, because I can't stand the first few weeks where I don't know what I'm doing, but I love walking into a job after 6 months or so when I might as well own the place cause they can't operate without me. Talking on the phone in general, me, calling anyone other than my immediate family, please don't answer please don't answer please don't answer please don't answer voicemail picks up oh, thank god reads what I wrote down in advance, congratulate self for making the call. Coming face to face with people in my apartment building. After being in lockdown and working from home I've become covered stupid. I'm not able to even get out a hello.